Hello, listeners, and welcome back to Stuttering Through Life, the podcast that's all about stuttering. I'm your host, Kyuyan Lee. This episode, we have Kate Allen on the podcast, a fellow person who stutters. Hi, Kate. Yeah, hey, 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 guys. So uh, why don't you tell us a little about yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Kate. I'm 25. Um, I've been, I've had a daughter my, my, my whole life. Um, I currently work, I, I live in Salt Lake. Um, I currently work in healthcare finance. I just graduated from USC with my master's in health administration. Um, and I used to work as a bartender, waitress, and a, a front desk gal. Um, in addition to my a job, I still, um, you know, wait, 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 waitress quite a bit. Um, in my free time, I like to ski hike, bike, and hang out with my dog. That's great. Yeah, uh, that's quite a lot of height. <laughs> um, that's quite a lot of height to wear. It must be very fun. <laughs> <laughs> and can you tell us about your stuttering journey so far? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. sure. Um, so, my parents first noted I stut noticed I stuttered when I was around five. Um, and from a more th therapy perspective, I went to both private therapy and to, to uh, uh, public school therapy. I, I went to a private elementary school, but I went to the public speech therapy. Um, I did various therapies from the speech easy which is a device that goes into your ear and makes it seem like your brain is talking with someone else and that helps helps with your speech. Um, I did intensive therapy where you do droning um, and that takes away your stutter but doesn't allow for my personality. Um, it also teaches you that stuttering is a bad thing. Um, so I probably went to therapy till I was about 11 or 12, maybe even 13. Then I stopped. And then once I went to high school, um, about midway through freshman year, I went, I asked my parents if I could go back. Um, and so I've been with my speech therapist since I was about 14 or 15. And she really taught me that it's okay to, to utter. And, um, but she gives me the tools I need when I don't feel like stuttering or when I'm giving a presentation or stuff like that. Um, in addition to therapy, I'm on medication. Um, I've been on medication since about third grade. I've done every medication that you could think of for <laughs> speech. Um, there's only one, one, one guy, one do do doctor that is specialty in psychiatry for Ordering. Um, and there's currently no FDA approved medications for it, but there is medications that are FDA approved for, say, schizophrenia or depression um, that affect my speech in, in a good way because. Um, a lot of stuttering is a lack of dopamine um, in the speech area of the brain. And because all the depression, schizophrenia affects the same new neurotransmitters, um, it helps quite a bit. And mm -hmm. actually, I have had insurance problems, so I haven't had my medication for quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, so if you talk to me two months ago, my speech would be way different um but yeah that's about it as far as therapy and uh you know my speech I I've, I was never really made fun of as a kid not even in high school um I had a very very normal life I would always give presentations speaking class you know all that <laughs> great good stuff mm -hmm. yeah and then I went to Ohio State for 
um, you know, my undergrad, which was great, uh, but definitely some insecurities there around my speech and, you know, meet, meeting new people and things like that. But over the past, you know, however many year, 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 years, I'm actually the most confident I've ever uh, ben and I give um, actually just today I gave a presentation over Zoom or over Teams over in for two two ha, ha, hundred p p people. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so I don't think my sixteen year old self, as confident as it was back then, would ever <laughs> imagine do, doing stuff like that. Um, and actually, kind of a side story. I always mention that I stutter before I, you know, give pre presentations and stuff, mm -hmm. especially over Zoom and over Teams because people think it's their either my speaker or their speaker. Right. So I always mention, "Hi, I'm Kate. I'm a person. I, you know, I'm new to the team, and I'm a person who stutters. So it's not your computer audio. It's me." <laughs> um, so I always make that joke, but because there are so many people on this call, not everyone heard that. So a couple people in the chat. We're like, hey, like you're kind of cutting in and out. Um, I can't really hear oh, no. you. And then I couldn't see the chat because I my screen was, you know, I was sharing my screen. Right. So a couple people responded like, oh, she has a stutter. Um, yeah. So it's kind of, it's 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 cool because then like my my, my whole team at, at work now we're super open um about about it and the fact that they task me to present um and I present to you know I not to the CEO but like you know to head to head and guys and stuff like that so it's kind of cool to see how far you 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 can come and that you really can do your stutter does will 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 not hinder you yeah very true yeah, it's great that you have that um, close community at work, and it's it's so great that they could back you up like that, and since you told them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I didn't know, I um, actually didn't know that you've been with your speech therapist, Lauren, for so long. I thought it's only been a couple of years, but that's like a really long time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually... <laughs> Oren is when actually my like life I've met mentor actually like I when her baby was first born I saw her like the week after she was born um she came to my graduation party Aww. um we're just like very 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 close because when the when you're talking with someone for an hour every week you have to right. have stuff to talk about yeah and then you get to know them super well and then I know her parents I know her others we've gone to a trips up to LA and things like that so it's pretty it's it's cool cool to have um a, a, a such a good re 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 actually talked about medication for stuttering at all on this podcast so thank you so much for bringing that up oh yeah yeah sure actually yeah. most people don't even know about it um I forget how we found out about it when I was a kid but that's actually how we met Lauren um is through my doctor mm -hmm. um and it's super interesting because my speech is, I mean, it's not terrible right now, but it's still much, much worse than it you, 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 you usually is. Mm -hmm. And I can actually feel like it get worse by the day oh. um, because usually after I take it for a while, like my speech is like fine for the most part. 
And then if I go off of it for a couple of weeks to a month, it's still kind of okay. Cause it's still kind of in my brain. And then now that it's been like a month and a half, it's completely like gone. Yeah. And I've kind of experimented with going off of it. Cause it makes me gain weight or like not be able to sleep and stuff like that. Um, the one I'm on now is not, not that bad, but then after like two to th- th- three months, I get so fed up with my speech. It's so bad. I have to go back on it. Um, so I don't know what the long-term effects of these medications are, but I don't care. <laughs> yeah, no, if it helps your everyday life, then it's like totally go for it. Exactly. Right. So, um, I was wondering, um, as a person who stutters, what are some difficulties that you've encountered in social or professional or professional situations? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I tell this to a lot of people, they don't, they underestimate how hard it is to have a stutter, um, especially one where you can't really, where it's a little bit more obvious. Um, every single day I have to tell people I have a stutter mm-hmm. or when I'm ordering food, they're like, oh, ha ha. And they'll make kind of they don't mean to, to laugh, but they don't really know what's happening. Right. Um, or like, for example, I was um, serving at my bar a couple of days ago and my speech hasn't been great, but as the later the night goes on, the better my speech gets. Cause actually, and sorry, another side note, the louder it is, it distracts your brain too. So that's why when I'm bartending and waitressing, my speech isn't that bad. Oh, interesting. Um, it, it, there's a lot going on there's music and there's you know it's a lot loud so I do notice when I first start my shift I'm a little bit it's harder to, to talk and then once I kind of get in my zone um it's 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 a lot better but mm-hmm. for, for example just an encounter that I get a lot is I'll kind of stutter a little bit and they'll kind of like la 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 and I don't laugh back. And then I continue talking and they're like, oh crap, she has something wrong with her. Not, <laughs> not like in a mean way, but like, they're like, yeah. oh, she talk. so then they're like super nice um, <laughs> after that. So that that's both from like a serving perspective or just from like a social. Um, a, a lot of people get the hint without me having to say anything. But um, a lot a lot of the times I have to be like I I I have a stutter, and then they go, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I had no mm-hmm. idea. Um, so that's how it goes, like most of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but then there are some times where people, I would say ninety five percent of the time when I tell them I have a stutter, they're like, oh my gosh, I feel like. I feel so bad. I, I didn't know, blah, blah, blah. But then there's, there's a couple of times where people just don't get it. Um, like there was this one time at my bar and I think you already heard, heard the story actually, yeah. um, where I was serving a group of like, you know, late, late thirties or early forties. And I stuttered a bit and then the whole table just like burst out la, 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 laughing so basically I I told um the table like hey I have a stutter and that isn't like not okay okay half the table was like oh crap and then there's one guy was like oh I wish I got that on vi- 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 video oh my God. and to which I was like oh my god f you that is not okay I just got their orders or I already got the order so I went downstairs mm-hmm. and started angrily putting all the stuff in I wasn't gonna say anything but my coworker and I are really good friends so I did tell 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 her what they said and she goes oh no that is not okay you need to tell our boss blah 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 we have a very very small staff um Mm -hmm. and so we went and told our boss and I just started crying crying it's just embarrassing um, and as embarrassing, I had to cry to my boss. Um, 
And so then he's like, uh uh-uh. uh, he was not about it. They even knew the guy that was playing in the band and he was not, not about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so we didn't give them their drinks. And then he went up and told them they all had to leave. Mm-hmm. Um, and all of the girls, so there's th- three wives and then they're, they're ha ha. Husbands. And all the wives are like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm so sorry. None of the men even made eye contact. Um, that was probably because they just felt like complete a holes and did, did not know what to say. Yeah. Um, and embarrassed that they got kicked <laughs> kicked out of the bar. Yeah. Um. So yeah. That was probably one of the worst encounters that I've had in like a more, you know, um, open, but what I've learned too is if you're just open about it, people don't care because I'm very, very confident in how I say things. And I always, you know, make conversation and stuff like that. Um, and I always have a smile. And so that's my number one advice just to anyone um, is that it just does not, not matter. I stutter openly like all, 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 all the time. I used to try and use my strategies a little bit um, more just to kind of avoid that, avoid having to explain and like kind of deal with that. But now I deal with that stuff every day and I, I just don't care, care. And because I don't care, then I don't care. Um, definitely, it's a little awkward when you're in like a new social in in environment. Mm-hmm. Like for example, I went to this. Um, it was actually a beer Olympics where we each had a team and we played, you know, different games and stuff mm-hmm. but it was my one friend from college and I didn't know I maybe knew two p two p p p e e e p people there so basically I had to introduce myself to everyone else and like make conversation and stuff oh yikes um so I definitely like and the, the thing is the more I drink the better my speech gets so it's mm-hmm. fine like later yeah. on in the night but um, definitely a little bit of like, un- not uncomfortable, but like you have to get over those little um, stuff explaining. And a lot of the times they pick up, but sometimes like, oh, I have a stutter. And every time I say that, they feel really bad. Like a lot of guys are like, oh my God, I'm su- such an a-hole. I'm like, no, you're not. You don't know. Yeah. And then like, we're fine Mm -hmm. um so even though I stutter more openly now I do have to deal with that stuff um but I don't really care I've never had problems making friends um I would say definitely yeah the most awkward part is once you're with your friends and you meet mutual friends Mm -hmm. they don't expect me to have a stutter because it's not like my friends are like telling them that I have a stutter it's not it's not a talk. It's not something people like talk, talk, talk uh, about because yeah. there's nothing to say. Right. Um, so people just don't expect me to have it. So that's why they kind of make jokes. And so, yeah, just kind of getting over that first little, little bit of aw- 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 awkwardness. And then, you know, it's fine. Um, and then a more of a wor- wor- work in or- environment um when you're applying to jobs it's very very important like for me I make it known that my speech is not an issue I say it like up front I I I have a stutter it does not it does not affect my work it doesn't affect how I um like talk talk in meetings I'm happy Mm -hmm present you know what 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 ever um and then they can kind of tell that I mean what I say um so I've never 
I've definitely not gotten jobs because I'm not qualified, but I've never gotten jobs, not gotten jobs because they don't think, they think my speech will, will be a, pro- a problem. Mm-hmm. Like for example, for a year, I was actually the front desk girl um, at, at a job. Do- Doctor's office. Mm-hmm. I'd answer the phone. I'd schedule people on the phone. Yeah. Um, I'd talk to people in person all, all day. Um, so the phone was definitely the hardest thing I've had to um, do because when you're talking, when you're scheduled with the talk room, right? As that's <laughs> the part of your job. Yeah. Um, and so I've definitely that's really really when I learned to disclose. Mm-hmm. Uh, because like I've definitely had some gnarly encounters on the phone, like in high school, like people would like have. then finally through college I learned to explain that I that I do have a st- uh, 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 letter. Um this is my ADHD here too. Another story <laughs> I remember distinctly. The first time I told someone over the phone that I, I had a stutter, I screamed. I was like, I have a stutter. That is very, <laughs> very rude. Because she oh kept interrupting me and saying, I can't yeah. do what are you saying. The phone's cutting out. I'm like, no, it's not. It's me. She was just being super rude. And I was like, I have a stutter. You need to let me speak. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, go me. So I think that was like the biggest turning point for me being able to disclose. And then she was like, oh, okay. Um, and even like pe- people will hear me on the phone explain because mm-hmm. it does sound exactly like the phone kind of going in and out. So I yeah, totally understand. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. They just don't know. Right. And I think that was like an eye-opening thing for me, like just in a, in a, like a light a life perspective. That's why I love that you're, you're doing this pop podcast. Oh, thank people, you. people just don't know. Yeah. Um, and it's not really like very, people don't really talk, talk, talk about it. And there's not that many people that st- uh, uh, utter. Right. And even if there are, it might not be that extreme. Um, so, yeah, going back to the wor- wor- work thing, it took many, many years to be able to say that to a stranger and then being able to say that to my superiors and the VPs. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I work for a healthcare system and there's 26 different, different ho- ho- hospitals. Oh so I meet, I meet with like this CFOs and, you know, I present and stuff. And also I'm a 25 year old girl. I don't even feel like I'm qualified to work in this job. <laughs> I mean, I am, but everyone I work with is like a 35 year old plus male. Yeah. Um, I'm the only girl on my team team in my in my department there's 19 people people in my department I'm the the only girl oh my god Um, exactly and so that's why I make it very known that I am happy to present whatever and I make it known that I I have a stutter and I've never had any problems at all Uh, but that's also because I do good work and I know I know well now I know what I'm talking about a couple months ago it's tough to spend <laughs> when you barely know what you're speaking on. Um, but, but yeah, it's definitely been eye-opening to just how understanding, you know, pe- 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 people are because they can tell I'm not, I'm not a sh- aimed of it right um and actually when I spoke to your class I was bummed at myself for not reiterating this quite as much as I want want, want, wanted to Mm -hmm. but usually my main point I drill in is that if you're embarrassed of it they're going to be acting weird and kind of embarrassed for you and for them yeah it's just straight up front and you know you know make jokes and let let, let, laugh laugh and stuff like that and just say things as as confidently as you can well do not care yeah and then in a more personal perspective like dating I think I think I said this in your class too um the hardest thing for me in high school and even college was like, oh my gosh, no guys are going to want to date a girl that has this 
to utter, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. So I was very, I'm embarrassed to admit this, but I was very embarrassed or insecure about guys because I didn't think they'd want to date s- s- someone who couldn't really talk. Ha, 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 ha. But then, you know, I grew up, I gained some, some more confidence and now I'm very open about it with guys. Um, I do sometimes miss unity early enough to say something and then it's like <laughs> too late and I'm like, oh, I should have said something earlier. Yeah, I get um, that. But yeah, so that was kind of my last jump I had to, to make. And in the past like year or two, like I've had no issues with guys at all. In mm-hmm. fact, a lot of guys say they think it's yeah I'm like I don't know about that but <laughs> thank you um, yeah yeah I've heard that it's like interesting like I would like personally I've never thought of it like that way right? but I mean it, it works <laughs> I know I'm like you think it's cute okay fantastic <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it definitely takes you know a lot of time and I still have encounters where I get upset about it um but overall you know things things it takes a lot of time and experience and putting yourself out of your comfort zone. Um, but yeah, it really has not helped me back at all. I definitely have an awkward encounters all the time. And my, my, my friends and my coworkers are just amazing because they deal with it too. And it's funny, they don't, people don't really realize it till they hang out with me like or often. Mm-hmm. And then um, they kind of see it like oh my gosh does that happen a lot I'm like yeah every day <laughs> yeah yeah uh, people that don't know about it it's like there's no way for them to know just the extent of it or how it feels right exactly exactly and they they don't expect what anyone you meet you don't expect them to have you know a st- <laughs> Hutter. and I think stuttering is unique too because you know there's other speech impediments right but that those are more I don't know out there like you know when people are deaf you can clearly tell when right. people have like a a little lit 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 you can tell but stuttering is very unique because it's not uniform all across the board yeah like for sure. everyone has a different kind like mm-hmm. like um and everyone has different you know sets sets and Aries and actually one of my therapies is looking in the mirror and talking and I haven't been a therapy in a while and I'm like oh I need to go back to therapy and work on um all that but my (laughs) point is everyone's stutter isn't the same some people repeat words some people have blocks and so I think that's a big reason why people just don't know yeah I think so too and for me it's just weird to think about you know like many years ago people didn't I mean yeah I guess like not everyone knew that people could be like born deaf or become deaf or like you said have a lisp and it's weird because we're like living in a time right now where not everyone knows about stuttering but maybe in a couple years from now it'll just be like a normal thing exactly to like know Um, about yeah and actually I'm writing a book on it too yeah Um, that's right yeah, I'm trying to tailor it so everyone can read it and kind of mm-hmm. get stuff out of it, um, but also be um, in <laughs> educational mm-hmm. um, tool. And I'm hoping more, you know, podcasts like this come up and books are being written about stuff like this, because at first I'm like, okay, I'm not important enough to write a book. Like, I don't, nah. I haven't done anything out of the ordinary. Yeah, I have a master's degree, but everyone, a lot of pe- 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 people do. And then I started speaking, you know, to Lauren's classes mm-hmm. and speaking at her con- con- conferences and stuff. And every, so you know how in your class you have to write like a, 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 a paper on 
what like you thought about it yeah. um I don't see who writes it but I kind of see she'll she'll, she'll send a response mm-hmm. here or there and I'm like oh, oh my god good. I have no idea like this is what people thought when they hear 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 my story um and so the more I keep hearing like people's feedback um and how they just didn't know and they even I don't think my family even knows like what I go through um and just people in general don't know what we go through what it feels like how what therapy is like what medication is like the day-to-day um how to make friends how to date how to disclose in your work when it's appropriate to disclose like why I don't use my strategies all the time stuff like that and so the more people I told about it they're like wow that is so interesting I had no idea and then I was like maybe Mm -hmm. I should write a book so then I started a blog actually oh nice the blog's no longer a thing. It was more for me to kind of get, you oh, know, okay. started. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the first time I wrote the blog, I was like, wait, this is what I feel. Like, I've never, like, put into words. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, and then I kind of s- sent that out to a few pe- people. And they're like, oh, my gosh, this is so cool. cool. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to see over the next few years it be more open people be more open to not everyone looking the same and speaking the same and all all, all of that yeah for sure and I can't wait till your book comes out I'll definitely give a shout out shout out on the podcast when it's done I can't wait yeah yes same (laughs) (laughs) yeah and I totally get what you mean about when you first put your thoughts down into words that's how I felt when I was planning out my very first episode of this podcast I never really besides like um I don't know maybe Lauren when I first met her I never really explained like this in such a thorough way like what stuttering is and how it felt and it was really interesting to do um I think it was like good for me because I could get all my thoughts out and like I I could see for myself exactly how I felt about this and yeah um same with our book I'm hoping that this podcast is for people who stutter but also a lot actually for people who don't stutter so they could just hear about it and understand um to the best that they can Mm -hmm. yeah um there's something I was gonna say this is also my ADHD the second you said it <laughs> it's like oh I have a thought um you were saying about um I forget but I will come to think of it but that's another thing with the brain the ADHD my brain's like ping 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 <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah it'll definitely be a cool 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 um, not only from like a speech per, per, per perspective, but you know, kids with different either me- me- mental or fit phys- physical d- 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 disabilities. Um, like for example, I used to be a caregiver for a couple ladies with cerebral pop 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 palsy. And their bodies didn't work like as perfect as they should, but their brains were fine. Yeah, but, you know, sure. talked a little bit more slow and stuff like that. So I'm really hoping my book and your podcast and other things that pop up will not only help, you know, the speech community, but also just the whole people that don't fit the quote unquote stat. That is cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, 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 oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I can't wait for the day when everyone will know about stuttering and it'll just be normal. Exactly. I actually have a, a kind of a funny joke about that. Um, mm-hmm. You know how there's the phrase did I stutter? 
um, and it's actually a famous line in in um, the the office, right? Um, right. And then there's a couple of songs that go, you got me stut- 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 stuttering, you know, mm-hmm. like stuff like that, but stuttering because, you know, they're like ner- 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 nervous. Mm-hmm. So uh, actually a couple of weeks ago, my friend goes, does it make you like uncomfortable or mad when people like say stuff like that? I'm like, no, I think it's funny. <laughs> um, and like, because people do stutter when they're, you know, more ner- nervous or right. or stuff like that, but um, I it's kind of ironic on from like a PC perspective that stuttering isn't mainstreamed enough for did I stutter and the stuttering references to become like round. <laughs> on um and I think that's because the stuttering community isn't speaking up I personally don't care I think it's fine um actually my book is going to be called did I stutter because because yes in fact I did yeah uh now that you mentioned it actually um there's this I think he's an actor I think but there's this guy on TikTok his name is Mark Winsky, and um, he's a person who stutters, and he's this adult who um, started to make TikToks about stuttering um, recently, and I found out about him, and his page is actually really cool, and one of his TikToks that just went viral in the stuttering community was actually his opinion on the phrase, did I stutter, so that's perfect to what you were talking about. Um, he, uh, he, didn't address it as like a super hurtful thing but he did mention how it kind of shows stuttering in like a negative light you know like just the phrase itself but yeah no I agree with you I don't think it's like super detrimental to anyone but it's great how um I just liked how he was talking about it and the phrase itself Mm -hmm. yeah yeah I do I think that scene from that show did I stutter when he's all, all mad? Yeah, that was so funny. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I could never forget that. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, well, Kate, it was great talking to you and I'm so glad you could share your experiences with our listeners. Do you have any ending comments or advice you'd like to share? Um, yeah. Uh, my last thing I want to share from an educational perspective and from a personal perspective is um, when to disclose and when I disclose and when and to not, how I feel about people, you know, finishing my sets is because even though when they guess right, it is helpful. the more people finish my sentences, the more stressed out I become because I think they're just gonna keep trying to guess what I'm trying to say. And sometimes they're right, but most of the time they're wrong. Um, that's ap- actually been happening a lot more recently. The worse my stutter gets, the more I'm off my, my mm-hmm. I used to just be like, yeah, that's what I meant to say, or just kind of, um, go along with it but now I continue to finish what I'm saying not only from like a personal therapy point but also to like kind of train them um (laughs) that finishing my sentences won't make me finish the words the aster and it's not that they're uncomfortable with this with the stutter or whatever there are some people that do finish it because they are uncomfortable but my mom finishes them a lot I got to work on telling her not to do that yeah um and then like a couple of my friends will do it I usually tell my friends a, a lot of my friends will uh, 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 ask actually mm-hmm. um when the time is right like hey do you like it when I do that do you care and if they ask I'm like actually if you could like not um the reason being it like creates an anticipate pay patient because when I'm in the stutter I'm like okay they're just gonna finish it um so I don't need to like 
do whatever I do with my brain to get the word out. And then it also makes me want to say it faster so that they don't interject. Um, and so, yeah, I'm pretty open. I've, I'll never say if it's really bad, if it's like every other word, I'll be like, Hey, like, please don't. But usually if I just stutter through the word, they kind of get it. Yeah. Um, um, so that's a big one. That's a huge note. No, oh no. And I know mm-hmm. most I can't speak for everyone that stutters, but most people that I know would probably say, say the same. Yeah, um, and then, yeah. And then disclosing to, um, like Lauren always asked me to explain when I disclose, um, because we always joke about, it's not like, hi, I'm Kate. I, it's, uh, 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 that's not how I go around <laughs> introducing my uh, health. Yeah. That's um, weird. It is. Yeah. And so y- usually what happens is I'll stutter either on my name or uh, after that. And then, um, they will either make, I'll either have a really big block and I'll say it before anything. I'm like, Oh, by the way, I have a stutter. And that's like, whoa, 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 what that was. And everyone goes, I, oh, oh, okay. Like, I don't care. <laughs> um, or what happens is I stutter and I don't tell them because I just don't feel like it. Um, and then they kind of get the hint. So that's option two is they get the hint and they're like, okay, I, I understand there's like something wrong. Um, or option three is I stutter, I don't say anything and then make a comment and then they, then I say something and then they feel bad. So <laughs> that's why I try and say it as quickly as I can mm-hmm. after um, doing it. But it, there's there's times where it's just not, the timing isn't right after yeah. I'm saying it, you know, I'm not gonna be like, oh, by the way. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's, and, but I always, when I'm at work, not when I'm serving, I don't say it as much when I'm serving, unless they really don't get it. Then I'll be like, oh, I have a stutter. Mm-hmm. Um, but most people kind of understand. But when I'm giving presentations or introduce myself at my day job, which is 100% re- 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 and like like this afternoon, everyone, <laughs> even though I disclose, not everyone catches it. So they think, you know, my my speakers aren't were, 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 were working. Um, so I always, always disclose. I say, hi, I'm Kate. I work on blah, blah, blah team. Um, I am, I, I either say I am a person who stutter, stutters or I have a stutter. Um, and then I always joke, it's not your computer audio, it's me, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I would say those are two of the biggest things. I cannot express enough how disclosing has changed, changed my, my life life because I never disclosed in, in a high, 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 high school. Um, and also just one more side thing about how I far become with this closing mm-hmm. is in my first year of my sorority we had like an initiation type thing where you had to go around and tell like a personal thing about you like there is someone's like oh I have an eating disorder oh I my mom's an alcoholic like who 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 knows? Mine was that I have a stutter. The <laughs> fact that that's where I was in the point of my life. Also, girls are scary and sororities are mean. So I was probably like justified at the time. Yeah, yeah. But also, I didn't need to say that as my personal um, thing. But the fact that that's where, where I, that's where I was at that point. And um, now I'm hanging out with 25 people I don't know in an instrument I'm like, oh, by the way, ha ha ha. Um, so I, I think learning how to disclose and when to disclose and who disclose to is a huge, huge thing. Yeah, I totally agree. And that's very well said. Thank you so much. 
Mm, and, yeah, sure. Yeah, I agree. Uh, disclosing is honestly really hard. I'm having like a lot of trouble with it too, especially since I already have this like group of friends and I don't know when to like, I don't know. I'm just still waiting for like the quote, quote, right moment, but whatever. But yeah, it takes time and I'm so glad you're at the stage of your journey and yeah, it sounds great. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, th th thank you so much for, for, for ha ha. Oh, thank you. Uh, me and I hope I, my stories kind of go like in a thousand dir 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 <laughs> directions. I hope, um, you, you know, p p you and the, p the p p p p people that that lit 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 can kind of get a better understanding um and one more kind of note to add is everyone's experiences are just so so different yeah um like just because one person has a stutter doesn't mean the other person feels the same way um everyone has different you know, ways they grew up. A lot of parents are scared, are embarrassed to their kids' stutter, so they tell them not to. Yeah. A lot of a lot of sad. kids. I know a lot of kids get get made fun of as a kid, um, or stuff like that. Um, um. So, so I guess what's my point here? My 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 point is is that just everyone's experiences are so so different. So take mine it with a grain of salt because that's just specific to to me yeah yeah for sure and to our listeners as always thank you to you um if you enjoy listening to stuttering through life please consider sharing it to anyone who you think will find it will who you think will also find it interesting like uh like me and kate talked about sharing it with just a few people can have that ripple effect that will help us achieve our goal of having everyone in the world know about stuttering how 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 yeah um one more final note yeah I email today saying stuttering is low-key a super pop power um so hopefully we can make educate people and use our daughter to our advantage yeah for sure for sure all right thank you all for right. listening and see you on the next episode bye kate bye